Yo, what's up, guys? So this video, guys, it's the first type of new content that I'm trying to add to the channel. I already explained it in my community posts on my YouTube page. But if you did not read that, then I'm quickly going to explain what's going on. So in addition to my normal type of programming, I'm going to start adding two more topics to the channel. So in my normal type of programming, I usually pick a project, then work my ass off trying to complete said project. If the job is big, then I usually cut that project into episodes. And after finishing said project, just pick another one and repeat. But believe it or not, I also do other stuff while making these bigger videos for you guys. And I would also love to share that type of content with you guys. But I haven't really done that so far. Main problem with that is the videos would be like two minutes long and that would be just worthless. So in this type of new content, I'm looking to kind of share the odd jobs or odd ends with you guys. Gonna glue all that crap together and then try to make an interesting video about that. Another type of content that I'm planning to start releasing this year making shorter versions of my finished projects. I mean, uh, the bigger ones. Basically, those videos will be me plowing through everything in either time-lapse mode or ants in the pants mode. And what I'm hoping to achieve with those types of videos is to reach a wider audience. Right now, I'm thinking my one-hour vlog videos are not reaching, uh, you know, space so maybe that will help me out another thing that i added to the channel which you probably may be noticed by now is the patreon thing apparently quite a few of you for some reason demand it i don't know what's up with that so yeah my end goal here is hopefully to become a full-time content creator making videos for you guys, it's like a hobby to me, so it would be really cool if I could do this full time. And with these upgrades to the channel, I'm hoping to achieve that probably in a decade or so. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's start off with the first Odd Ends video ever. And the first thing I need to do is need to get this thing road legal again. Currently, the thing is not allowed on the road. Legally, I mean. So I would probably need to load it on a trailer, drive it to the DMV shop and have it certified. But I think I'm gonna go spy mode for this. Try to weasel myself into the city without getting caught and going to jail. Although, if possible, maybe I could take my camera to jail. Start vlogging from behind bars. Let's do hope that does not happen. Before I take it to the shop though, I need to fix one major problem with this thing. The problem is that I don't really have any place to set the camera on the machine while I'm riding it. So I would love to use my homemade uh, camera holder. Really simple setup. Just a magnet, hole saw, a bit of weld, some steel dubing, a nut, bolt and a washer and some rust. I think this thing cost me like five bucks to build. Let's short him out just nicely. Sits in the hole saw. And because most of my equipment is made out of steel, I could mount this thing pretty much everywhere. But the Yamaha piece of crap here is mostly made out of stupid plastic. I mean, even the Belarus lawnmower is made out of steel. How is this possible? What? So let's add some options to this thing where I could mount the camera.
Good work. They should work. Plus addition, got some free extra storage. I put about 10 BSI in the tires. Think that should do it.
kopi kõrval, mis see kõrati Elfori, see varvosa pood on sealt saad H1 Mille nad sul arvale on? Traktorina siti ja... You have got to be kidding me. So I just wasted like one hour driving to the city, failing the, I don't know, exam because of that light. You know, I'm kind of pissed off right now. I'm thinking I'm just gonna remove this machine from the registry. I've owned this ATV for about five years now. And the only time I'm on the legal road is when I'm driving to the freaking DMV office. So, so why even bother with uh, the TMV crap? If I only use it around the farm, then I don't really care if it's road legal or not. By the way, that was not the only thing that failed me. Apparently my fire extinguisher expired in 1996. So I don't know how they did not check this in the last four years. Sometimes there's just that one guy. By the way, if you're interested how I made this snowplow out of a Soviet gas cylinder, then that video's link is up in the corner. Also down below. So basically this year I'm gonna try to get a bit ahead of the gerb. Last year I kind of messed up on that part. I waited and I waited. And suddenly there was like this much snow everywhere. It was not fun at all. Oh yeah, that's pretty decent. Kind of want to make sure that the blade does not cut into the soil.
Great news, guys. So far, nothing has broken. Okay, well, let's go find something else to do. Man, this tire is starting to piss me off. Got some winter fuel for this thing. Also need to add this thing. So this is like um, cocaine for diesel fuel. sure I'm empty. This makes no sense. How is this thing full? Did I did I use the right hole? So the thing stalled on me and I was pretty sure I was out of fuel. After that I added about 10 liters of diesel and it worked fine. Knowing that my tank is completely empty I'm gonna wait until the winter time so I could fill the entire tank with the winter diesel. Well now it's winter time. So, how is this thing full? What? That is very weird. Whatever. My theory is that I don't have a theory and I have no idea what's going on. back at the start of this year I made a bunch of these I even have a video about it which can be found up here and so far these things have been terrific I absolutely love firewood but as much as I love it there is one thing that I absolutely hate about it and that would be the restacking 
stacking after stacking of stacking bunch of stacking and that's why i made these cages my end goal pretty much was just to have one stacking you split the firewood stack it in these cages and once they're ready i just take them to wherever i need them either it being the sauna the main house or the cabin But as things go, I've kind of noticed a negative trend here with these, uh, with these firewood cages. What I mean by that is the type of material I used to anchor these cages together. And I'm talking about screws. Now screws are great, but they just suck in outside conditions. If you're wondering, I did use outside rated screws. But ultimately, it doesn't matter if the screw is outside rated or inside rated. Because screws all have the same fault. They're made out of the same type of steel. On one hand, it's incredibly strong. Because it has to survive the impact driver without stripping the head. But on the other hand, it has a major weakness. So in outside conditions, if wood gets sweat, it expands. And if it dries up it again shrinks. Now this uh, expansion and contraction cycle repeats over and over again until the screws just can't take it anymore and it will snap. I think I can find a couple of examples here. So this one is just broken completely and this part has just collapsed. Hmm. Well, I guess the situation isn't that bad. But still, two pallets are broken and I haven't moved those ever since February. So this year when I do firewood, I will overhaul all of these gauges. Essentially, I want to make them as strong as possible. What I'm aiming for is that I can pretty much throw these things out of an airplane and they would survive the impact to some degree and instead of using screws to reinforce them i'm gonna use nails so nails are great compared to screws they're made out of different type of alloy a much weaker type of steel but that doesn't mean they're the crappier version of the duo what that weaker steel will allow is to bend and not break i mean if you try to bend a screw the thing will not bend very well not the same deal with the nail. This thing will bend all over the place. So what I'm trying to say here, nails for outside whenever possible and screws for inside whenever possible. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can uh, mend this tire. I think I've added about five batches to it and the thing still leaks from somewhere. Who's the genius who added three types of nuts on this wheel? If I ever find him, he will be getting what's coming to him. Leaky bastard, where are you?
Вот. I quit. Now this is not good. It's leaking from around the stem. The valve stem needs to be replaced. Not good. In order to fix this up, I would need to take the tire off the rim and then I could replace the valve stem. But in that case, I wouldn't want to put this tire back anyway. Oh boy. Tell you what, I'm gonna try a caveman solution. I mean, if it works, then it works. If it doesn't work, then chokes on me. Caveman solution works for me. To get this tire off the rim, I would need to take it to a tire shop. I wouldn't be able to do it here. This is gonna take some time. I call this thing the caveman pudding. It has a lot of great calories in it. Pints of protein and other stuff. Basically this thing is known as gimmicko metal. All it needs is a bit of strawberry jam. The mix ratio, hell if I know, look it up on Google. Let's add more. More is always better. Still hope this works. Because it's gonna be weird to explain to the tire guy about what the crap is this if I have to take it into the shop. I'm pretty sure this thing will not come off easily from here. This is like doing fine art. You have to make sure that there are no air caps. Hmm, okay, well, anyway, now we gotta wait. 60 minutes. This thing is nasty. Yeah, it pretty much smells like, I don't know, instant cancer. Although it said 60 minutes, I'm gonna let it sit for a couple of days. See you whenever. Hmm. Wait, what? Caveman solution Tita trick. That's amazing. Meaning I can continue using these Formula One tires. Anyway, let's go find something else to do.
Oh, by the way, did I mention you guys that I freaking hate snow? Yeah, well, now you know. Christmas tree lights. I know I'm a bit late on that matter. As of right now, Christmas is already over. But in my defense, right now, for me, at this time, I still have about two weeks until Christmas. So I thought, let's light up this situation a bit. And also this deal. So my vision is to have Christmas lights all around, all around the building, on the leading edges. But for that I got two boxes of these. One box is 30 meters, so total I have 60 meters. The house should be about 55 meters, uh, give or take a couple of miles. So let's install some lights. Maybe it will look better, maybe. I think let's go for some pants mode for this part. Uh, 60 meters ended up being a bit too long. They don't actually sell this stuff by the meter, so have to manage with what I got. Had to do some improvised solution there. I guess we'll see. I mean, the options were not that great as well. So there was like a 18 meter one, 30, 48, and the biggest was 120, I think. And the pricing is kind of weird as well. The 30 meter long was 27 bucks. So do was about 54. The 48 meter beast, though, was 78 bucks. Yeah, simple math tells me that makes no sense. Don't even get me started on the 120. I think that was like 200 bucks or something like that. Pricing of different lengths, kind of weird. Anyway, let's add some crap here as well. I'm just gonna set this tree on fire and that's all the Christmas lights I need. Hmm. By the way, ever since I replanted this uh, tree, if you're interested, here's a link to that video. The tree has actually done pretty good so far. So we always had some kind of a problem with this tree. When we got the tree, it was about yay big. And the dips on the thing have always been dry. But ever since I replanted it here, I have I have noticed a lot of green stuff on the dip area. 
I mean, even the driest dip has started to get some green, green stuff. I mean, I'm no expert, but I think green stuff is great. So maybe this uh, rocky soil kind of suits this tree a bit better than the dark, rich soil it was previously. I guess time will tell. But anyway, uh, let's wait for the earth to do its thing. Then, uh, then let's see what's what with the lights. Looks like earth has moved a bit. Wow, what the crap is this? Anyway... Hmm, looks kinda neat though. This thing definitely is no warm white though. I mean, that's white. That's like smoldering yellow. Warm white. Warm white my ass. I guess this also works. It actually looks pretty good, I would say. Got some great Christmas spirit going on now. I mean, this side looks pretty okay. And I'm really glad that I got a bit left over. So I could do the center part also. I mean, the camera doesn't show it that well. But the lights actually illuminate this area quite well. Maybe I can do some kind of a picture montage for you guys. Yeah, let's do that picture thing. Anyway guys, I'm thinking let's wrap this first episode up. The first episode ever in this new type of content. I do hope this is worth it. I will start working on the second episode whenever I find something interesting worth showing. So be sure to let me know what you think about this video and should I continue this type of content on. Basically let me know if this video was worth it. I'm kind of on a test run right now, but until then, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one, bye.